Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. And as Claire said, this is one of the, the beautiful things that I'm involved in um, from my time in the diocese as diocesan advisor. I always just love this moment where we connect with so many people in our schools and in our communities. Um, and I'm always blown away by the sense of prayer in this virtual space. And I really feel that the spirit is with us. So, um, you know, I, 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 I thank you for allowing us the opportunity to, to, to be here with you today. And we just take a moment to arrive. Um, delighted to be leading this. It's, it's, a, it, it's a, an awkward time for Marino because our students are in the middle of doing exams. And if they're not, they're out on placement. So it's just me. Um, so so um, and uh, some people will help me out with some of the readings. So um, our, our theme for this year, um, our Advent Space for Grace is Pilgrims with Hope. And uh, the idea is, uh, or Pilgrims with Peace. So the idea is that we are, we are moving on um, and we are thinking of our broken world and we are trying to keep peace at the center of everything we do. And even though this week, the first week of Advent is um, our, our, our center is on hope, um, and the first candle is the candle of hope. We are uh, concentrating very much on us, our own personal pilgrimage uh, towards Christmas and taking that on as a pilgrim of peace. So we'll begin now as we arrive in this space in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Loving God, as we begin our Advent journey, help us to stay awake and be ready to welcome your Son as he comes along among us bringing peace and joy. I now light this first candle. This is the candle of hope. As we light this purple candle, we ask you, dear Jesus, to remind us that you are the hope in our broken world. This Advent, help us slow down, listen to your voice, and focus on what is really important. We place our hope in you as we prepare our hearts to celebrate your birth on Christmas. Amen. So let us take a moment as we arrive in this space, in the stillness of our heart, as a community together, as a community of faith this day. And let us ask God our Father, as we begin our Advent journey, we do so with great expectation for the coming of Christ this Christmas. This is also a time when we answer Pope Francis' call to begin on a synodal pathway. Like Advent, this synodal pathway is filled with expectation as we await to hear the Spirit speaking in and through the people of God. As we await the coming of Jesus this Christmas, may we have expectant ears and hearts so as to hear what the Spirit hopes to give birth to in the church at this time. In our Advent and synodal journeys, may we forge bonds of unity and love as we share our life and faith stories. With each passing week, our Advent read will grow ever brighter. May the light of your spirit show us the path we need to walk as a synodal church this Advent season. So we will begin with, um, with the gospel reading, which we, we took from this Sunday, from the first Sunday of Advent. It's the gospel from Luke. You might be familiar with it, but um, we just begin with that and we might do a little reflection on it afterwards. So I just invite Claire to read the gospel for us. Thanks, Lily. Jesus said to his disciples, there will be signs in the sun, the moon and the stars and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this gospel on our first Sunday of Advent is offering us a vision and a challenge 
to wake up. It's a good for time for us to take a look at the quality of our spirit, spiritual wakefulness. Waking up really sometimes isn't all that easy. In a commentary on Advent, Thomas Merton reminds us that Advent is not about waiting for God. It's about waking up and recognizing the fact that God is already present among us in the here and now. Our task is to seek and find Christ in a world as it is and not what we think it ought to be. Advent is a celebration of hope. So this is a challenge to us because we are called to be looking forward, to be ready and to be, to be prepared. And we are asked to wait in joyful hope for the light of the world. Waiting is not something that we are usually good at these days. Our modern world tells us to move faster in so many ways. However, Advent is asking each of us to do the very opposite. During these sacred days of preparation, we are being asked to take some time to be still and silent as we prepare ourselves deeply for the Christmas season. While we can't simply ignore the shops, the media, the advertisements over the next few weeks, neither can we ignore the words and message of Jesus in today's gospel. Be on your guard, stay awake, because you never know when the time will come. What I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. So, I'd like you to think about some reflection questions for the next few minutes. Based on the gospel, the gospel has asked us to stay awake. How might I be on guard during this Advent season? What do I need to do to make that happen? How might I approach this season of Advent in a way that might open me to grace that is found in waiting? Pope Francis' call is to for us to hear the gospel's core truth. Jesus loves, strengthens, and frees us. Advent challenges us to make room for others, desire good and embrace joy, even in a shaken world, trusting in God's steadfast love and salvation. How might we undertake this challenge as we begin our Advent journey? Let us remember that our life becomes beautiful when we wait for a dear one or for something important to happen. May this Advent help us transform our hope into the certainty that he whom we await loves us and will never abandon us. So I just ask you just to sit back for a minute or two now and Think about that, the reflection on the gospel and the idea of the light, the light of Christ, the light of the world and the joy. Let us not forget the joy in our heart and hold that joy in our heart because that ex expectant hope is always about something that is joyful. for a miracle the heart longs for a little bit of hope oh come oh come Emmanuel the child prays for peace on earth and she's calling out from a sea of hurt oh come oh come 
So I just invite um, the people who are helping me out here to, to read this. And we just say these as our bidding prayers. Um, I'd like to call it the Advent checklist. So um, I whoever's, where, Rob, would you want, or whoever's starting there, I, I'll ask you to come in there, please. Okay. Lord, help me to make a difference, not in some imaginary tomorrow of perfection, but in the confusion of now. Lord, help me to live out our brokenness and to work toward healing. Lord, help me to make my life an invitation for others to live more fully, more joyfully and more freely. Lord, help me to see and to encourage in others what they often do not recognize as strengths in themselves. Lord, help me to have a care for the mysteries, the troubles, and even the darkness of others, knowing that in many cases they have traveled or are traveling distances we have not had to go. Lord, help me in the presence of pain, darkness, and confusion to try to remember that I am a pilgrim for peace this Advent. Amen. Amen. So I just invite us all to say this prayer for peace together. Lord God of peace, hear our prayer. Lord, come to our aid. Grant us peace, teach us peace, guide our steps in the way of peace. Open our eyes and hearts and give us the courage to say, never again will we Instill in our hearts the courage to take concrete steps to achieve peace. Peace, peace. Keep alive within us the flame of hope, so that with patience and perseverance, we may opt for dialogue and reconciliation. In this way, may peace triumph at last, 
And may the word division, hatred, and war be banished from the heart of every man and woman. Renew our hearts and minds so that the word which, which always brings us together will be brother and our way of life will always be that of shalom, peace, salam. So just as we uh, finish up, um, I just want to, I, I won't play this video because I'm just aware of the time. Um, I just play it just for a minute or two, but I just think again, just to gather all our thoughts and our prayers here together and um, just to remind us of, um, of, of, of this journey that we're all undertaking as a community of faith and to remind us of what this journey is ultimately about. Lord God, as we conclude our prayer, let us remember that Advent is a time more than any to renew our commitment to listen, to be attentive and to respond. Help us not to remain asleep, but be awake, to wake up and digitally be attentive to the profound voice of our Lord. May this Advent be a time of deep re renewal in all our lives. May it be a time in which we strive with all our hearts to seek out your gentle and profound voice. Give us the grace, dear Lord, to turn away from the many noises of the world that compete for our attention and to turn only to you this Advent. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs>